If you thought Carolina had something with J.P. Tokuto, wait till you watch his little brother Seth in action this year. What exactly does he bring to the table? Oh, you better believe Coach Pat Kilby and I are breaking it all down on today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's June 29th, 2022, hump day, it's Wednesday, and joining me like he does every Wednesday is Coach Pat Kilby. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to welcome you into Locked On Tar Heels. Please don't forget that we are free and available anywhere you get your podcasts, and so you can go and subscribe right now. If you're watching on YouTube, it's very simple, just hit that subscribe button right there by it, smash the like button, and leave a comment about all your great hopes for Seth Trimble and what this ridiculous young man can do. I want to remind you that there are just three shows this week because while you're listening to watching this, I'm in Mexico with my family. And so Coach Pat Kilby and I actually recorded this last week. And uh, so, man, lots of fun there. And big shouts to Pac for, for hopping on with me early. As a reminder, we are working our way through Carolina's roster, Carolina's basketball roster, every Wednesday of this summer. Today is our last freshman. We took a break last week to talk about Pete Nance uh, since he had just committed to the Tar Heels. And so if you missed that one, go back and listen or watch. But today, it is all about Seth. Tremble, what do you think about this young man, Mr. Pat Kilby? Golly, this kid is an absolute monster, man. <laughs> he he is. is a monster. I'm super excited about having him as a Tar Heel. Boy, yes, yes. I, I, not spoiler alert, a little preview for later in the show. I think he brings something to the table that Carolina hasn't had. I don't know if ever or, or when recently, but boy, I can't wait to see this. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Mr. Trimble? You bet. Yeah, so Seth comes to us from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. If that sounds familiar, that's because that's where J.P. Tokido came from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he came from Menominee Falls High School. AAU team is Phenom U. Interesting little note about Phenom U is they're actually the only grassroots program, at least to my knowledge, in the state of Wisconsin. So, Interesting. Um, Seth's playing for the best of the best um, and plays a point guard role for them. Um, and that's what I imagine him doing for the Tar Heels. For a point guard, he's got a, just an unbelievable build. Uh, 6'4", 185 pounds. And folks, let me tell you, you look at the kid's face, you see a baby face. He looks maybe he 16 years old. His body is fully developed <laughs> this dude is it's like a, a caricature it doesn't look like his head fits on his body. right yeah yeah exactly and so i saw him at the final four his legs are tree trunks folks they are tree trunks kid if you've seen his highlights he's very explosive so he's got a great build and his strength for a point guard is something that i haven't seen at least since i've been a carolina fan and that goes all the way back to 93 we haven't had anybody like this in my lifetime. So I'm super excited about the way he's built. Um, he's a four-star recruit, uh, five-star in my opinion, but that's not, uh, that's not uh, up for debate right now. Uh, ESPN's got him 46th, Rivals 34th, 247, 28, and the composite has him at 35. He committed to the Tar Heels on June 23rd of 2021, so we're almost a year to the date, little, little over. Um, he chose the Tar Heels over Michigan and the in-state school, Wisconsin. Um, in fact, that was, you know, North Carolina and Michigan really battled that out. Uh, I think there was a little bit of time period where I thought Juwan Howard was going to be able to snag I him too. away. I, I was and, too. Uh, because of his athleticism, I never thought he was going to Wisconsin, but I, I legit <laughs> thought he might stay yeah, and play for Juwan Howard. Yes, I did too. I, I really thought there for a, maybe like a two-week time span that we had lost him. Uh, but obviously, HD and staff locked that down, thankfully, because he's going to be a great fit for the University of North Carolina. 
Absolutely is. Listen, you talked about this one uh, AAU franchise in Wisconsin. Well, I feel like they've missed something there in the state by not having some kind of cheese-related AAU grassroots program like, <laughs> you know, like cheddar something. I don't know, man. There's got to be some cheesy, <laughs> cheesy cheese uh, alliteration. Yeah, man, like... Let's move to Wisconsin and start a better AAU name. Just <laughs> they got to do better there. What what are we doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. And and ultimately though, as you said, it's so great to have the the relationship that that um, Seth already did with Carolina, um, having his older brother there, similar to a, a Puff Johnson situation, where I legitimately thought he might wind up at Arizona, but uh, I think uh, Puff heard everything, all the glowing reviews from Cam about that. And I'm sure that something was very similarly the same for JP and Seth in this scenario. Um, and so, man, so glad he is a Tar Heel, like you said. I, I'm with you, Pac. I think he is better, um, at, at least a better fit for Carolina than these rankings show. Um, but, you know, chip on the shoulders, never a bad thing. Never. Never. <laughs> um, and so, um, for those of you wanting to get in and follow Seth on the socials, uh, on Twitter, he is at Seth Trimble one the, the number not spelled out. And then um, on Instagram, it's just Seth Trim. He's trimmed off the bowl. And so, just <laughs> Seth Trim, T-R-I-M, right there. And so, man, I just... I know we have this for later in the show, but we've already kind of breached it. And so I just want to say, like, to have somebody of this caliber backing up what should be the best backcourt in America already, and then you bring in this dude who just about anywhere else would probably hop right into the starting lineup. Like, uh, pack, like... Goodness gracious, it's going to be insane. And, and I know he's going to have growing pains like so many other um, Carolina freshman guards. But it's just, I feel like well, there's just been this embarrassment of great guards that Carolina has had recently. We, I mean, going back to Kobe and Cole Anthony and Joel Berry and all Marcus and all these dudes. And it just keeps happening. And it really, Seth really has the feel for me of somebody who could be one of those, when you think about Carolina great guards, steps into that mold. Oh, absolutely. And I think he's going to be, I, there's no doubt in my mind, as long as, knock on wood, as long as he stays healthy, I think he's going to be an absolute fan favorite. I think he's going to be a phenomenal player. And here's the cool thing about Seth. Seth is, not only is he a great guard, but, man, he's going to be somebody that's cool to root for because he's a Tar Heel through and through. He's had a brother come through the program. Uh, his family made the trip to the Final Four to root for the Tar Heels this year. Like, he's a fan you know, of the program, and now he's coming to play there. And so, you know, if we can't get on board for that, then what can we get on board for? <laughs> Man, and, and I love that that example. Um, and, and you and I have talked about this before, Pac. You, you had mentioned it in a conversation we had a week or two ago about Seth's family coming to the Final Four. That That's not some uh, like benefit the university provides, right? That's just the, the family saying, hey, we want to go. And, and obviously because of JP, there's the ties. But you don't do that just to do it because your kid went to that school one time. Absolutely, yeah. They're spending their own money to be there and to root for the Tar Heels and uh, to be a part of that. So, yeah, they're, I mean, they're as much of a fans as they are, you know, as, as anybody else. And so um, it's going to be cool to, to have that. And one thing that, you know, we haven't really talked about is how good the families are of the Carolina players. That's Man, one thing yes. I, I learned, uh, you know, we, me and you have briefly talked about like yeah. Leaky Black's mom, how awesome she is and, this is another – I got to visit with Seth's father uh, while we were at the Final Four. This is another great family just joining the Carolina family. And so they're going to be a great, great, great fit for the Tar Heels. Boy, 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 boy. Well, let, we got to talk uh, about Seth's game and what, what he brings. <laughs> what are his strengths? What are his weaknesses? How does he complement what RJ and Caleb do? What does he bring to the table that maybe RJ and Caleb don't? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first – let me tell you a little bit about what our friends at Built Bar have done. They're always coming out with amazing new flavors, and this time they're really outdoing themselves with this new mud pie flavor. 
And they've come out with it in both a bar and a puff. You're not sure what a mud pie is? No worries, I'll tell you. The new mud pie bar is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and just dusted with cookies and cream crumble right there on top. You gotta try these as soon as possible because they are limited time only and so you gotta get in and order these now at built.com. Not convinced yet? Well, let me remind you that it's actually good for you. This mud pie bar is packed with 16 grams of protein, only 150 calories, and just eight grams of sugar. It's like your mom makes you a delicious chocolate mud pie, but is like filled with carrots and cucumbers or something instead of all the sugary stuff that I want. Well, what's great about Built is all their bars are made with collagen protein. Your body absorbs this more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So eat something that tastes good and actually is good for you. And you can eat this anytime you want. You need a snack after your workout, a little late night, bite to eat, whatever it is, Built is the perfect protein bar that tastes great. Chocolate mousse, whipped cream, cookies and cream crumble, stop drooling, get to Built.com right now to order your box of mud pie bars or puffs right now. You're not going to regret it. And while you're there, use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15. 15 to get 15% off at built.com. Well, 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 Pack, let's get into talking about Mr. Trimble, what he does well, what he's going to need to grow in, and everything else. Let's start as we always do with his strengths. And with the freshmen, I always like to ask this question. Seth Trimble could play in college already because of this skill. Seth Trimble could play in college because he's a great defender. And mm. specifically, he can play for Hubert Davis because he's a great defender. <laughs> that's, and, that's right. Uh, he's the type of guy that we can build a defense around. Um, and he's not hes not leaky. He's not like that. hes You don't just put him and have him chase. But on-ball defender, um, I think Seth, Seth can really set the tone for a defense. And so um, – and that's really good for us because – that's a little bit different than what Caleb can offer or what RJ can offer, and he can provide that coming off the bench as a and you know backing those two up. So he he really really is a good defender, and uh, you could really see that come through in the USA under eighteen games that he just played in. He was kind of the the spearhead, if you will, for their defense, and he set the tone. I thought, and he can do that for the Tar Heels as well. And and so often we think about like somebody coming in off the bat, like let's say another freshman, Tyler Nickel. When he comes in the game, it's going to be about microwave instant offense. What does it do for a team like you as a coach? If you know you have someone coming in off the bench um, that is going to provide that level of defensive capability, what 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 does it do for the team, and what does it do for your mindset as a coach? Well, for one, you know it gives you a spark, which you just mentioned, but. It develops trust, and hmm. you know a lot of times, and you could kind of see this last year, especially as a coach. Coach Davis didn't want to take those guys out of the game. Why he didn't trust the guys off of the bench, and more so, teammates develop trust with each other. Hmm. You think Caleb Love's going to want to come out of the game for somebody that he knows is going to, you know, screw up or <laughs> is going to put them in a situation where they're going to have to dig the team back out of the hole or whatever. So trust is so key when it comes to that stuff. And now having Seth, what he provides, Caleb can look at Coach Davis and say, Coach, I need a breather. I need a breather. And know that Trimble's going to come in and he's going to do a really good job. Um, and so that just the trust that, that's going to build not only between the coach and the bench, but between teammates is going to benefit Carolina because we didn't have that last year. No. And that showed with Caleb and RJ playing more minutes than any Carolina guards have ever played. So yeah. that will be a, certainly a solid benefit from Trimble. Yeah, and it's going to allow all three of them to play at a higher capacity level, right? Like if you're let's let's compare it to a starting pitcher versus a reliever. If you're a starting pitcher, you know like, hey, I can't come out and give 95% of my gas right out of the gate. I might be throwing at 85 to 90% of my capacity because I know I got to go five or six innings. If you know <laughs> you're going to have to play 37, 38, 40 minutes a game, you got to kind of dial back a little bit on defense. Maybe 
uh, you know, settle for a jumper here or there rather than driving. Whereas if I know, like you just said, I can give the signal, get Seth in the game. Man, if I'm Caleb or RJ, I'm going all out. And then Seth knows he can go all out when he comes in as well. What what different level will that add for 2022-23 that 21-22 didn't have? Yeah, that's just, man, and you, I mean, you nailed it on the head. That's the mental mistakes that are made whenever you're, you're tired, tired. Yeah. or you decide to be lazy here and there and you pick <laughs> and choose your spots because you know what you're going to have to do. You know, you know, you're going to have to play 38 of a, minutes of a 48 or of a 40 minute game. And so just having that will be so, so, so key. And, you know, you can flip that around. We kind of talked about this last week with Pete Nance and the flexibility he provides. He can spell Baycott. And, you know, obviously Puff and Dontrez are growing and developing and potentially even, you know, DeMarco Dunn. Those guys are going to be able to contribute off the bench. And just that's the reason we didn't win a national championship last year. That You've, you've mentioned that uh, multiple times. Now we're going to mention it again. Having that depth this year – takes us to the next level as a team yeah i love that what what is it that really sets seth apart what does he uniquely bring to the table that nobody else does yeah seth is different than any guard we've ever had we've mentioned this already his body he's extremely strong he's a good finisher because of his strength he can create contact very good athlete he drives to the basket penetrates really well um, I guess, you know, a part of his game kind of transitioning weaknesses that I really haven't seen yet is his court vision. Uh, and it's not that it's not there. It's that he's such a good finisher around the rim. He's so <laughs> creative and crafty and not to mention explosive. Gosh, <laughs> it's like, oh, you yes. want to meet me at the rim? Let me just go up on top of you and finish. And so climb your back. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so uh, it's not that he can't pass. It's that he doesn't have to because <laughs> he's so mm-hmm. dang good. But um, he's he brings so much to the table um, defensively and then offensively with his strength and ability to finish. Yeah, watching Trimble's tape, there, there's this play, for example, from his senior year. Uh, he takes off from the corner, as you're looking at it, from the left corner, uh, just inside the three-point line and takes off. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a nice little layup from Seth. It'll probably look athletic or something. But he just keeps flying and, like, cocks his hand back and just slams it through. And it's like, what? Like, normal humans don't do things like this. <laughs> and and this, I mean, he's he's six four. He's throwing down one-handed alleys from his teammates. Um, like, I've seen him have a couple tip dunks, like off a, off a rebound, going up, doing something you expect somebody that's like 6'8", six, 6'9", six, to do, but yeah. no. And, like, there's a couple play like, I'm so used to seeing, like, Caleb or RJ weave through the lane and, you know, find themselves open at the rim in a layup. He weaves through the lane, behind the back, whatever, hammers it down like a little tomahawk. To, I mean, re- just ridiculous stuff. Um, his hang time, like I saw this one play, he mistimed his jump on defense right at the rim, but still hung up in the air long enough to be able to block the shot. And it's just like, you're spot on, Pac. Like this athleticism is elite, elite athleticism. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, man, he's he's a freak is the, the best way I know how to describe it. He's just, he's a freak athlete. He is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. And he's a freak, just like his brother. We saw that with JP over and over again, the the highlight reel dunks and all that stuff. But there was a glaring area of weakness in JP's game uh, that we talked about a lot that it seems like maybe Seth might have in his game. And so what what is a, a big area of improvement for Mr. Seth Trimble? Yeah, he's got to improve as a shooter. Um, now, JP just flat out, could not shoot. <laughs> so I mean, Absolutely. I love, like, love it. I'd say it to his face. Yeah. Yeah. He's the source of many chest bumps in my house watching him dunk. And I love him. Couldn't shoot. Seth can. He's just got to improve, you know, to where he can do it at a high level. So there's a lot more, and this is not a knock at JP. There's a lot more to like about Seth's game than there was about JP's. Absolutely. And 
Um, I do, I do think that we can call it a weakness, but I think that he's a solid enough shooter, but it's got to be something he improves at. Absolutely. Because at the high school level and even at AAU, he's such an elite athlete that he's able to get where he needs to go at will. But in college, there's going to be more of him that that can stop him from doing that. And so he's not going to be able to rely on getting to the rim at will. And I mean, he'll still do it at a very high level and probably finish at a very high level. But to be able to complement his own game with a shot and to be able to pull up when he needs to and complement that with being uh, a a Tyler Nickel four-level scorer, got to hit that outside shot consistently. Yeah, and I think one thing I wanted to mention real quick was I think we could see something with Seth, kind of like what we saw with Caleb Love, the shooting jump he took from his freshman year to his sophomore year. I think we could see something like that with Seth oh, also. That's a good word. That's a good word. Yeah, like when I watch Seth shoot, it's very similar. Like I remember watching JP, like his his base, is, I'm going to stand up here for those of you watching, is so wide when he like gets his set to gather. Um, yeah. Like it's like unnaturally wide. You know, you think about wanting to have your feet about shoulder width apart, maybe a little in from that for your shooting position. But I just remember JPs were always like, Two wide. It's like, JP, put your legs together, homie. And <laughs> Seth, like, watch, uh, if you're watching or listening to this, go look at some of um, Seth's highlights. And, and he's got a little bit of that, too, in his jump shot, I've noticed, in his base. Yes. Yeah. They also explode very high in their jump shots. Like, <laughs> they really put the emphasis on jump in their yes. shot. Yeah. Uh, you know, where most people, it's like two or three inches off the ground and just you know, follow through. No, these guys, they're like dunking it from the free throw line, like, or, or attempting to, they're really exploding off the ground. And yeah, that's fine. If they can elevate over and get their shot off, it just seems like there's a little bit of, uh, uncoordination, if you will, to their shot. Um, but all that stuff will get ironed out with Seth. I have, I have confidence in that. Yeah, there's a few guys on that bench who know how to shoot that can teach him a thing. Or two. <laughs> Just a few. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> oh, man, that's so good. Well, as always, folks, Coach Kilby has his player comp for Seth Trimble, and the UNC connection is strong. It's another Tar Heel who has a family member that played recently at Carolina. Who is it? We'll talk about it in just a second. All right, it's that time as always in our third segment of our player previews, Coach Pat Kilby's player comps. And here's what's cool about today. We got a two-in-one because it's a Carolina player who also had a nice little NBA career of his own. As I've alluded to, there's another family connection just like like JP and Seth. This uh, gentleman's son was a recent Tar Heel guard. Who is it, Coach Pat Kilby? Kenny the Jet Smith. (laughs) <laughs> Kenny the Jet, that's right. Love yeah. it. Why, why do you see um, these two basketball players as comparable? Yeah, they comparable. have similar. Comparable, they have comparable. Similar. I like comparable. Yeah, let's go with comparable. That's <laughs> tough, though. I mean, it's like tomato, tomato. You can go either I know. way. <laughs> I'm a big comparable fan. Let's go with that. Yeah, I like it. Uh, they have very <laughs> similar builds. Uh, six, six, four, you know, 100. Kenny, I believe, came in at like 170, whereas... Seth's 185, a little bit bigger and stronger, yeah. but yeah, the the base Nothing is wrong the with same. They have yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they're both, you know, just unbelievable athletes. Um, you know, Kenny didn't get the nickname the Jet for no reason. You know, he's he was fast, he was quick, he was explosive, and Seth is going to bring a lot of that same stuff to the table. Yeah. And like Seth, Kenny came in with the the skill set, you know, the base level skill set and he improved, and mm-hmm. he became a better shooter and all those things. And I think that we'll see some of that same stuff from Seth. But as they're coming in, I see a lot of similarities between the Jet and Seth Trimble, which if you're a Carolina fan, that's got to excite you a little bit. It absolutely does. How the uh, I love that you said he got that nickname like for a reason, but I wish it was ironic, like how you call a fat person tiny. I wish he was yeah. called the Jet because he was like, super slow (laughs) but he's not he's legitimate quick 
and as is Seth Love, this comparison. All right, so Pac, talk to me about why you are so excited about Seth. And, and I think if I remember correctly, you told me you have a bold prediction for him as well. Yes, I do. I'll save that for the end. Okay. Uh, I'm excited about Seth because of what we've mentioned. He's got a, just a crazy skill set. He's a great finisher. He's explosive. He's a highlight waiting to happen. He's a defensive anchor. He provides us immediately with much needed backcourt depth mm. and is able, in my opinion, he's going to be able to be a very, very, very key contributor right off the bat. Yeah. And that's important because so many times – Freshman Carolina guards struggle to find their way. Um, I don't think that's the case any longer because this isn't Roy Williams' system. This is Hubert Davis's, And I think it's a little easier for players to come in and play. And it's geared that way. It's not all of this high-low and all this different orchestrated stuff. It's simple. It's it's horn sets and ball screens and go play basketball. Space the floor and knock down shots and – um, so, anyways, but when you I do think, struggle, you're you're not the one that's being relied on, like Kobe or Cole. <laughs> yeah, you just go back yeah. to the bench. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I think it's it's a nice fit, and there's a lot to be excited about. Now, the bold prediction: this is how good I think this kid is, and I don't even know. I, I'm confident enough that he's good, so good. I'm not even going to say it's a bold prediction. I believe it's going to happen. I think that after Seth's sophomore year, he will be a lottery pick in the NBA draft. I, I really believe he's that good and that talented. Wow. Okay, so after this year, Caleb and RJ move on. Uh, or Actually, RJ probably won't. I, I don't yeah. know why I'm saying R. Um, and then uh, you have a starting backcourt the next year, uh, RJ's senior year, Seth's uh, sophomore year of Seth and RJ. And uh, Coach Kilby's predicting a blow-up. In a big way, boy, that would be super exciting. I, like, I'm here for it, man. Let's yeah. let's see it happen. Um, yeah. While we do have all these guys together, though, I'm really curious. You think we'll see ever like a small ball lineup with all three of these guards together? I think we could. I definitely think we could. Um, especially, obviously, the way the game's trending. But because Seth can guard so well. I yeah. think that there's a there's a chance that we could see all three of them on the floor at the same time together. Yeah. And yeah, just he, uh, yeah. a little fast forward here. I know you mentioned just, you know, RJ probably staying. You put Seth in the mix, and then we're talking about mixing in Simeon Wilcher. Simeon Wilcher. <laughs> and Gigi. And, Goodness you know, gracious. Carolina basketball is in a good spot, folks. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely it is. And, and it helps if you have that – three guard lineup like that both Caleb and Seth are six four and so that gives you a little more defensive flexibility if you do yeah. that and, and you look at like what Baylor has done or Villanova with running out legitimately three guards at times there there is a scenario and I, I don't think it'll be the norm but we could see that in certain scenarios yep um what like so I mentioned earlier there's something I feel like I haven't seen um Th- that uh, we're going to have the opportunity to do with this year's lineup. But you have, who I know he's a four-star guard by the by the recruiting numbers, but five-star talent um, that is capable of coming in for either RJ or Caleb, um, either position. And, I mean, that you know, I was trying to think back. Like, the best I could think of recently was somebody of Joel Berry's caliber coming in to back up Marcus Page when needed but like what what does that do for a team in terms of like long-term success yeah well it first of all i mean just being able to have the depth helps you long term because you're not wearing down throughout the course of a season you know playing high level minutes but it helps the team success because it allows seth time to grow as a player. Mm. He's not being thrown into the fire right off the bat and everybody from Tar Heel Nation judging his game and critiquing him. And You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. because yeah. let's be honest, that that happened. That happened with Cole Anthony. That happened yeah. with Kobe White. Like yeah. Those guys were having to be thrown into the fire. Seth's going to be able to come in and he's going to be able to find his niche. He's going to be able to find his role while growing as a player. And then, bam, he's going to be 
able to work his way into that starting role as a sophomore. And so, yeah. um, and, and that helps the whole team when he's growing as an individual player. So Absolutely. it works out well for both. So, Pac, what does this do for DeMarco Dunn? You know, I think right off the bat, Seth is a better player. Um, that's that's going to – that's just – it is what it is. Uh, now, I do think there's still a future for DeMarco Dunn in North Carolina Tar Heel basketball. I think that DeMarco can be a key contributor, and I think he could play next year. Um, who's to say that, you know, Hubert doesn't go nine or ten deep? Uh, DeMarco's just got to find – something to get him on the floor. I, I think it's pretty clear there was something lacking last year or else he yeah. would have been because yeah. Hubert was begging for someone to be able to provide <laughs> depth. Yeah, that's a good uh, word. And uh, if it's – whether it's defense or whether it's shooting, whether it's just coming in and being able to orchestrate the offense for two or three minutes to spell RJ or Caleb, whatever, DeMarco's got to find that niche. Yeah. But Seth coming in is already – a better player that's in my mind i'm just going to throw it out there i've talked about it to you i'll say it to everybody seth trimble's the fifth best player on this team as soon as he steps on campus that's my opinion Um, i think that that'll prove itself over time but seth trimble is very very good and that's not a slide at demarco dunn it's just seth is going to come on to campus and help us right away yeah man that's good and, and yet, for all that talent, something that I want to make sure we touch on is watching him interact um, and watching his tape. For everything he's so crazy at and could have all this this pride, he doesn't... He, he seems like a nice kid. Um, his While his play is showy, he is not. Like, he makes yeah. a ridiculous play or embarrasses somebody with a block and is not finger wagon is not all up in their foot. Like just turns around, makes the play and goes back up the court. Um, yep. Like he is a guy that just seems like he just goes about his business the way you want somebody to go about their business. Like being, being all in for the team, being happy and excited, but not to the, uh, not in, not so as to show up somebody. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that. And I think part of that is like you talked earlier about the the family aspect that he comes from, and it just seems like there's just good good roots in him. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Uh, I think naturally he's in like his personality. He's kind of just level headed, and that's what you want out of your, especially out of your guards. You yeah. you want composure, and you want them to look like they've been on a big stage and made big plays before. And that's Seth and. Yeah, you nailed it on the head. He's he's a good kid. He comes from a good family. He's going to be a good fit. Whoo, boy, let us get to October and November. Get the ball rolling. Man, we uh, love talking about Seth Trimble. I, I, I'm with you, Pac. I think he's going to make a huge impact on this team, something that we haven't been able to have um, with that third guard in recent years. Well, friends, that is it for today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Coming up on uh, Friday show, remember there will be no Thursday show, but on Friday is an interview with Brian Chacos. Uh, If you know that name, he is a former UNC lineman on the football team, but also now works for the Rams club. So we have several different interesting things to talk about. I want to thank you so much for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen or your first watch every single day. Please go to the subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. If for those of you who are watching, also smash the like button, leave some comments about Seth Trimble and why you are excited for him. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. You can follow Pack at Coach underscore K23, and you can follow me at Isaac Shade, I-S-A-A-C-S-C-H-A-D-E. Now, I want to ask you to make Locked On ACC your second listen today. Get more on the ACC by making it that second listen every day as host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Locked On take you across the ACC in 30 minutes. Hey, thanks so much as always for spending part of your Wednesday, your hump day, 
hanging out with Coach Pat Kilby and me, talking Carolina hoops and Mr. Seth Trimble. Next week, we are going to move on to the sophomores. And so we have just those two guys over the next two weeks in Dontres Styles and DeMarco Dunn, who we talked a little bit about today. And we want to remind you that it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Until tomorrow, peace.